The Gus Bus opens its doors to student volunteers to promote learning on wheels. Then softball takes the field in sunny Florida for its first game of the season. Plus, looking for your rom-com fix? Well, the lights are up on this production of the last five years. I'm here at Betty's giving you a slice of the action at their 10-year anniversary celebration. Live from the Allison B. Parker Studio in the School of Media Arts and Design at James Madison University, this is Breeze TV. Welcome back to Breeze TV. I'm Zoe Mowry. And I'm Maggie Rickerby. Harrisonburg police are looking for any information regarding an attempted armed robbery earlier this morning. At around 2.30 in the morning, a call came in to the Emergency Communication Center describing the suspect as a man around 5'6", wearing all black, armed with a handgun, who fled the area after the victim ran away. All of this is according to a press release from the HPD. There was no injuries or evidence of any property being taken. The attempted robbery occurred near Sunchase Apartments, Campus View Apartments, and Red Point. If you have any information, you can reach out to Detective Dyer at 540-437-2680 or leave an anonymous tip by calling Crime Stoppers at 540-574-5050. Well, this Valentine's Day, some Dukes are ready to get their hearts pumping by rolling up their sleeves and donating during the Red Cross blood drive. The Red Cross is experiencing a nationwide blood shortage. A January report showed blood donations were down 40%. This has been the lowest over the past two decades. Recent winter weather has placed an additional strain on the Red Cross's supplies, causing many drives to be canceled. But JMU students and faculty may have the opportunity to help turn things around. The drive is on Wednesday from February 14th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Warren Hall in room 256. The Gus Bus is securing the future of Harrisonburg, starting with childhood education. Breeze TV's Madeline Binex spoke with JMU students who partnered with the Gus Bus to help enrich the education of underprivileged children. It takes a village to support children in need. JMU senior Jack Hill Commons is just one of the many volunteers who has chosen to spend his time giving back to his community. We kind of try and take what they're learning in their in their school and make it more engaging and fun that they could do after school. So. They don't, almost like they don't realize they're learning, you know. Student volunteers are the building blocks of this program and help shape the lives of students in K through fifth grade. Every semester, we send out um, two bulk emails to the student body at JMU. Um, so we recruit for what we call classroom volunteers as well as tutoring volunteers through those two bulk emails. Since the pandemic, the program has been under stress with the lack of availability among the student body. I've just never heard of anybody not enjoying it or not getting something out of it, maybe. And so we do get people who want to come back, but it's hard if their schedules won't allow it. The search for volunteers continues as the Gus Bus is always looking for new faces to help bring the fun into these after-school environments. I've been here for four years. I've always been looking to kind of branch out and do something, but I never really knew what. Um, this is kind of a great way to get involved. I'm Madeline Binack, reporting for Breeze TV. Benny's has been cooking Benny's has been cooking up a special celebration for their 10th anniversary. Breeze TV's Madeline Binack is downtown where the beloved pizza spot is hosting activities and a chance to win Benny's for a year. What do you have for us, Madeline? I'm here at Benny Sorrentino's where celebrations for their 10th anniversary and National Pizza Day are in full swing. Benny's has been a beloved pizza place in downtown Harrisonburg for the last 10 years. Customers come year-round for a lunchtime snack or late-night revival and to enjoy made-to-order slices. Today, they're offering a special deal for their 10th anniversary. Customers are lined up out the door to take advantage of the $1 slice event. These cheap slices will last until 2 a.m. tomorrow. I'll have more later in the show. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks so much, Maddie. Well, forget dessert. The little grill in downtown Harrisonburg is going full course. The restaurant is aiming to stand out and make their customers feel extra special on their birthday. Owner Ron Copeland decided this year that customers who come to the restaurant on their birthday will receive a free meal. Copeland says it's a great way to say thank you to regulars and invite new people to try the little grill risk-free. This feels like a celebration place, and I just thought, what kind of other celebrations? And I thought, wait a second, there's thousands of them a day. 
Copeland says they hope to keep the celebration alive for years to come, one meal at a time. Come give it a shot and, you know, when people bring people who haven't been here before, they bring their friends. So it's, I feel like it's just a win-win, you know, it's just kind of perfect. Well, we got a lot of good stuff coming up on the sports desk. Yes, women's basketball put in another win this week, days before the Max Sunbelt Challenge continues. Then football's roster is ready for spring ball after National Signing Day. Then the JMU 2024 Call of Fame class is unveiled. Sports director Colby Reese has all this and more on Breeze TV Sports. It's bow time. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99. A deal so good it's worth repeating, but it won't last long. So much flavor. Eat and repeat while it lasts. So much flavor. It's bow time. It's bow time. Hurry in the Bojangles for two scratch-made sizzling sausage biscuits for just four bucks. One bite and you'll want breakfast for dinner. Good thing we serve savory sausage biscuits all day. But this two for four deal won't last forever. It's bow time. It's bow time. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99? That's a New Year's resolution. Probably won't last long. Kinda like mine. Get more flavor this year with a boldly seasoned leg and thigh, choice of fixin' and a biscuit for $5.99. It's bow time. <laughs> it's bow time. Dude, we need gas. No, we gotta get those Supremes. We're not gonna make it. It's bow time, baby. So worth it. Right? I'm glad y'all ran out of gas. Boldly seasoned chicken Supremes with a biscuit fixin' and drink. It's bow time. <laughs> It's bow time. <laughs> Bojangles' new chicken rice bowl starts with dirty rice, topped with Cajun Pinto's chicken and cheese. How's that chicken rice bowl? It's bold from the bottom up. Get a fresh, hearty chicken rice bowl for a limited time. It's bow time. Welcome back to the Sports Desk, your source for all things JMU Sports. I'm Colby Reese. To start off sports this week, we're going to toss it over to Bree TV's Piper Hepler for updates on the start of JMU softball season. Piper. Thanks, Colby. Softball slid into its season this weekend with a trip to Florida for the River City leadoff. There, the Dukes will face Ball State, Jacksonville, North Florida, and Southern Miss. After preparing at home, head coach Lauren Laporte says they're ready to get the season underway. We've been practicing for four and a half weeks. They're tired of playing against each other. Um, and they're ready to go face other people and, and be on the field as one. With new faces from the transfer portal joining the team, returning Dukes are stepping up to teach the new players. Laporte is hoping that the highly experienced team will be able to perform with confidence. These juniors and seniors and even super seniors um, have gotten their feet wet as far as playing time um, and playing a lot of games and giving a lot of at-bats. Um, so I think that is going to be key for them mentally going in the game and feeling comfortable about their game. The Dukes will be back in Harrisonburg on Friday for their home opener. The team will face Villanova at 11 a.m. Softball scored its first win of the season earlier today over Ball State. The Dukes took the victory in a 6-1 win with Isabel Fishman scoring two runs. UVA transfer pitcher Molly Groob had her JMU debut on the mound today, pitching for six innings before she was replaced by Alyssa Humphrey in the bottom of the seventh to close. Softball is currently taking on Jacksonville in the second game of the River City leadoff. JMU has faced Jacksonville two times in the past and has won both of those meetings. Currently the score is 2-1 in the top of the fifth inning. That's all I have for softball. Colby, back to you. Thank you, Piper. Women's basketball hosted South Alabama Wednesday night and defeated the Jaguars 82-66. to Ksenia Kozlova recorded a double-double with 21 points and 11 rebounds. Peyton McDaniel scored 22 points, including a halftime buzzer beater. 
Both Heaven Bristow and Ashanti Barnes came off the bench and scored in double figures. The Dukes out-rebounded the Jaguars 56-35 and outscored them by 30 in the paint. South Alabama took the lead early in the fourth quarter. However, Jamie would use the final seven minutes to pull away, securing the 16-point victory. I was proud of how we our backs went right against the wall and, and we responded. Um, how we did that, right, we, we, we started to defend with some, with some teeth and we rebounded with the physicality that I know we're capable of. The team is going to Ball State on Sunday for the Max Sunbelt Challenge. Tip-off will be at 2 p.m. on CBS Sports Network from Worthen Arena. It's now time for this week's Loop Around the Sun. Starting with our women's standings, JMU is up to second after getting a big win at Marshall, handing Marshall their first conference loss of the season and that win over South Alabama, as just mentioned. South Alabama is no longer winless in Sunbelt play as they beat Texas State last week. Big win for their program. And Troy is still in third despite losing at Old Dominion this week. So a tight race between two very good teams there. Moving on to the men's side of the standings, there's not much movement that happened in the top half of the standings. But JMU is now only a game behind second and first place Troy and App State. App State does now have a lo two losses in Sun Belt play as they um, beat Georgia Southern in overtime, but then lost to Texas State. So App State there getting a second loss. But these standings will not change throughout the weekend as teams will be playing in the Max Sun Belt Challenge. That's all for this week's Loop Around the Sun. National Signing Day for football programs across the country took place Wednesday. Here in Harrisonburg, head coach Bob Chesney announced the signing of 17 mid-year transfers for the 2024 campaign. The signing class sits at 34 players. The program has added seven Virginia native athletes and players from 15 different states. Standout names include linebacker Jacob Dobbs, who followed Chesney from Holy Cross, and quarterback Dylan Morris, who was on the sideline for Washington's national championship loss to Michigan earlier this year. Chesney was hired less than a month before the transfer portal closed, but feels his staff did a good job bringing in a wide variety of necessary players to continue the success of the program. We have been on the road as coaches getting out there and trying to find this next wave of guys for this, but then also for the class of 2025. So we're excited about you know what we have brought in as far as the caliber of student athlete we have brought in. Excited about the caliber of competitors they are, winners that they are. The team is set to begin spring football on March 21st, ahead of the spring game at Bridgeforce Stadium on April 20th. JMU Athletics announced its 2024 Hall of Fame class this week. Football's 2004 team is set to be inducted 20 years after securing the program's first ever national championship. Mickey Matthews, football's head coach for that season and from 1999 to 2013, will also be inducted. This Hall of Fame class will also include women's basketball head coach Betty Janes, baseball infielder and outfielder Greg Miller, women's soccer forward and midfielder Annie Lowry, field hockey and lacrosse player Julie Martinez, and softball pitcher Meredith Feltz. The induction ceremony will be held on September 6th at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. Wednesday was Women in Sports Day, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Ellie Finza, Sam Reinard, and Piper Heffler, who are a huge part of the sports desk and do a great job every single week. That's all from the World of Sports this week. Zoe and Maggie, back to you. Thanks so much, Colby, as we wrap up this edition of Breeze TV. How this new major helps students combine their passion for music and business. Then JMU is looking for the perfect match to give them their perfect date night. Plus, Breeze TV's Lauren Keller has got you covered with your weekend weather. You won't want to miss the rest of Breeze TV. It's bow time. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99. A deal so good it's worth repeating, but it won't last long. So much flavor. Eat and repeat while it lasts. So much flavor. It's bow time. <laughs> it's bow time. <laughs> Hurry into Bojangles for two scratch-made sizzling sausage biscuits for just four bucks. One bite and you'll want breakfast for dinner. Good thing we serve savory sausage biscuits all day. But this two for four deal won't last forever. It's bow time. <laughs>
bow time. A leg and thigh dinner from Bojangles for just $5.99? That's a New Year's resolution. Probably won't last long. Kinda like mine. Get more flavor this year with a boldly seasoned leg and thigh, choice of fixin' and a biscuit for $5.99. It's bow time. It's bow time. It takes 49 steps to bake a fluffy, made-from-scratch Bojangles biscuit. But to make it a country ham biscuit, it takes 50. Get a fresh buttermilk biscuit today with a slice of juicy country-style ham. It's bow time. It's bow time. <laughs> Bojangles' new chicken rice bowl starts with dirty rice, topped with Cajun pintos, chicken, and cheese. How's that chicken rice bowl? It's bold from the bottom up. Get a fresh, hearty chicken rice bowl for a limited time. It's bow time. This is Breeze TV. Students can now declare a music industry as a major starting this year after only existing as a minor for decades. Breeze TV's Amelia Morgan found out how students and professors are making music and business work in perfect harmony. JMU's new music industry major offers a way for students to hone their skills in the modern world. Students will learn music history, including present-day pop, how to build harmonic structures through music theory, and the way music is created and consumed. And it wasn't so classic, fo classical music focused, which is kind of what I wanted to steer against. And this is very much like the business side, which is everything I wanted. Brooke Ludwin is spending years promoting her own music, and now she gets to show off her skills with Marathon in original. Ludwin says she came to JMU for professors like Ojo Taylor and David Cottrell, who was the driving force in making the major happen. The, the thing about the BA that I'm particularly proud of is that it makes the School of Music more available to a larger number of students. And the barrier of an, of an audition is removed. The Bachelor of Music is, um, I would say, more traditional and more rigorous. Those students take lessons, they have to give recitals. Bachelors in Music also requires an audition process and an interview. You know, how, how does music fit in your life? And what do you see yourself doing in five years? You know, the kind of stupid questions you always ask that really, no one really knows how to answer, but the idea is to get a feel for where the student is and, and how, and what their passion is for music. We want to make it possible for students to realize their musical dreams if they have any. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Amelia Morgan. The musical The Last Five Years will be at the Forbes Center this weekend. Breeze TV's Alexa Bonilla spoke with the cast and director about bringing this early 2000s musical to a new age. JMU senior Joaquin De La Cruz has dreamed of directing the last five years since his start at JMU four years ago during the COVID-19 pandemic. I've been thinking about it in my head for literally years now. And so to see it all just come together like this, it's, it's so amazing. And my dreams are literally coming true. This two-person cast and 24-person crew focuses on the performance rather than a huge ensemble and extravagant sets. Most of the musicals I've been a part of had like 30 to 40 people in it. And to see a musical with just two people was really exciting. The story follows the five-year love story of ex-lovers Kathy and Jamie with director De La Cruz's edition of setting the show during the COVID-19 pandemic. People are going to get a lot out of it, specifically by the way that we set things during the pandemic. Um, this show is really an exploration of how relationships, how people have loved each other over the course of the last five years. In the musical, Kathy and Jamie rarely interact together on stage. The story of their relationship is simultaneously told from the beginning to the end through Jamie's perspective and backwards to forward and Kathy's point of view. The last five years just takes you through a whole bunch of different emotions. Um, you'll laugh, you'll cry, um, and it's just a beautiful, heartbreaking story. The last five years will be at the Forbes Center this Friday at 8 p.m. and Saturday at 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. in the Studio Theater. Reporting for Breeze TV, I'm Alexa Bonilla. 
Do you think you have the JMU It Couple story? Well, JMU is hosting a contest for alumni who met and fell in love in the Berg. The Alumni Association is giving away a free gift card for a Valentine's Day dinner to one lucky couple with a JMU love story. Alumni must upload a photo of themselves and the story of how they met to be entered. The couple with the most votes wins. The deadline to submit your love story is February 10th at midnight. Voting begins this Saturday and goes until Tuesday the 13th. Well, Maddie Bynack has more for us at Benny's Pizza. How's it looking out there, Maddie? I'm back at Benny's with JMU alumni Haley Glenn. Haley, how did you hear about the $1 Slice event? My roommate's currently at JMU, so she told me about it. What's your favorite part of Benny's Pizza? I like the size, like for the value of it, it's pretty good and it tastes amazing. This event is available until 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, so get your slice while you can. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks so much, Maddie. Well, it's finally starting to warm up here in Harrisonburg. Breeze TV's Lauren Keller is in studio for this weekend's weather. What do you have for us, Lauren? Thanks, Maggie. The groundhog may be right as we have beautiful, warm, but breezy weather here today. Friday's weather in Rockingham County consists of highs in the mid-60s and high 50s and lows in the high 40s. Petersburg, Stanton, and Lexington will stay cloudy the rest of the day, while the rest of the county will be partly cloudy. Saturday's weather, it will be Saturday temperatures stay consistent with highs in the mid 60s and high 50s and lows in the high 40s. The clouds will come over the county, but in Lexington and Monterey, there will be about a 40% chance of rain. As we go to Sunday's weather, you might want to grab your umbrella and coat as the whole county is expecting showers. Due to the showers, the county will see about 80% humidity, and for our temperatures, the highs will drop to low 50s and high 40s, but Franklin will stay at 56 as a high. The lows, however, will stay about the same in the low 40s. That's all I have for weekend weather. Maggie, back to you. Thanks so much, Lauren. The 66th annual Grammys were held this past weekend. Breeze TV reporters took to the road to recap the night's events. was not even that good. It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. Keep going. I didn't love Taylor's look. <gasps> I, I agree. Me. I agree. Oh, not, not a re-recording. Who won the album? She is the first person to win album of the year four times. Yeah. I wish I did, but I do. Remember every moment on the nights with you. She already has like nine Grammys and like she's only 20, 22. She's one of 20, the like, people and she's super close to getting an Egon. Yeah. yeah. I might, I might kill my ass. I mean, she spent, what was it, like three years writing that album? And it shows. Yeah, it shows. I could dance, I could dance, I could dance. Dance the night. If you guys are interested in watching that whole video of us recapping the Grammys, it'll be up on the Breeze's website and social media later today. Well, Maggie, we sure did miss you in the car for the Grammys. But. Yeah, unfortunately, I did catch the flu, so stay safe out there, guys, and make sure to keep washing your hands because it is not fun, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. We will see you all, guys, next week, same time, same place.